lounging, son. Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name's Ryan. Going to go through an awesome book today. I'm going to go through Bucky O'Hare, the continuity graphic novel by Michael Golden, Larry Common, Corey Adams. Uh, before I go further, though, I just want to let you know, uh, to if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that be uh, bell icon so you're notified every time a new video like this goes up. We do interviews, re weekly reviews on new books and going through old stuff like this. And super stoked to go through this one today. If you're a child of the 80s, then you probably know Bucky O'Hare or even early 90s if you're a kid. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember when the cartoon stopped. So actually, this is not the first appearance of Bucky O'Hare. This originally he appeared in a book called Echo of Future Past uh, one in 84, between 84 and 85. So right around the time actually Ninja Turtles was making its uh, debut. And this is all six parts of that collected into here. Eventually, in 91 is when the cartoon came out, which is how I discovered the character. I didn't know it was a comic book. Kind of same idea, like I didn't know Turtles was a comic before the cartoon, because like that's just how I was introduced to it. But you know, it it ran kind of short lived, but you know, obviously I had the toys, all that stuff. So, you know, growing up and discovering that it actually was a comic book was something that kind of piqued my interest. So uh and look at it, Michael Golden, Larry Hama, two absolute legends in comics. So I'm really, really stoked to be able to go through this today. So right off the top, like you get an anthropomorphic, you know, he's a green rabbit, kind of reminiscent of the Star Wars uh, green rabbit characters, uh, Jackson. Um, got a really dope supporting cast. You got Deadeye Duck. You got Jenny over here. And you got their robot, uh, Blinky, reporting for service, as he says, I, I you know I definitely remember having some of these toys, so it's, it's really cool to see it. We got Bruce the Beel Juicy and Berserker Baboon right here. Um, just the coloring on here is next level, dude. Especially for this time, like this is eighty six, so when this came out, it's just amazing coloring. Just a be absolute beautiful book. I mean, Michael Golden just like killed it on this. I couldn't have imagined that you know if you would have told me that. There was a comic book based on this cartoon toys and that it was this good i there's no way i would have, would have believed you obviously you know their their adversaries are the toadies that's who they're going after or who's going after them rather the whole concept of this is super cool because like well you see it on the cover like there's a human boy what's he doing there right and then you while this is all taking place in space says meanwhile in a completely different space time continuing going to san francisco this is where we have this boy obviously kind of bullied kind of an outlier compared to his parents who seem kind of more like hippies a little bit like you don't you don't ever see their faces you just see him and you can see that obviously like he's not the happiest of kids but he is really brilliant even having a sign like keep out nuclear physicists at work you know, he's telling them, he's like, look, you know, my own parent th parents think I'm some sort of Republican because I don't get upset about the whales and baby seals. I don't give two hoots about microbiotics, zen, archery, ceramics, macrame, satire, solar power, or my karma. I just care about science. So how about cutting me a little slack, please? So, the, the, you know, like, let's take the veto of as so much proletarian. He goes up to his room, typical kid's room, right? But then you go over here and he's creating this weird contraption you don't know what it is and then he says it's a photon accelerator doesn't understand what's going on with the lights he goes to touch the outside window but it has like a a, a texture to it it's like weak old blackberry gelatin he says then he realizes he's getting he's getting something on the screen toes in space he doesn't understand what's happening the door spotlights here and then what happens bucky o'hare and the crew see a door they go through it, and there we get Willie DeWitt. So he comes in, and he's going on this adventure with them, gets sucked into their world, and proceeds to just be such like a fun little, you know, like, space fantasy type thing, you know, combination where the kid gets sucked into a world, and now he's with, you know, his ragtag, you know, team of, of whoever you know like it just very 
reminiscent of all those like old 80s movies that I dig so much. So they get away from the toadies to go back into his world and then realizing that somebody turned off their photon accelerators. So there's two photon accelerators in both worlds and that's how they were able to connect. And then when he sees the lights go out, that's how they realize it's back on. They go back into their world. And you get a little history on the toadies and like kind of how they became the adversaries and the, you know, they started out as scientists and shit goes wrong and now they're conquering different planets. Just a really fun adventure. I love the design of Bucky O'Hare who worked for space, sentient protoplasm against colonial environment. Sentient protoplasm against colonial encroachment. It's pretty funny. He gets it. Willie gets his space space suit, so he's part of the crew now. Just a really exciting world. I kind of wish somebody would kind of bring this character back. I don't know if it's ever gonna happen, but I dig. I dig this concept. I dig the characters. And like I said, if you haven't read this, this is definitely something I would seek out. I don't think it's terribly expensive. I know at one point they were at Neil Adams' Krusty Bunker's comic shop. I think he had some because Continuity Comics is, it was his studio that he produced some fucking pretty cool comics out, out of late 80s. But just really fun. You know, just remi reminds me of, a, you know, a little bit of that nostalgia from, from being a kid and remembering these toys and the cartoon. And I remember always really liking Dead Eye Duck. He was always one of my favorites besides Bucky, obviously. So they succeed in their mission. But the crazy part is at the end, when Willie is going to try to go home, he can't. His parents go in there. They're looking for him. He's not there. He has a note. Sorry, but I just had to leave. We'll explain later. And even their response, far out, he's run away from home. I didn't think he had it in him. And the mom, he's just a kid, David. I just know something awful. And it ends. It says, Willie will be back before daylight. That's the usual Besides, he's a res or they're saying he'll be back before daylight. You know, he's a responsible kid. But, you know, they have no idea. He's already saying his parents are going to be worried sick. He's, he's stuck in this world because they turned off his photon accelerator. But now he's part of the crew. All right, laddies, let's croak, croak with some toes is what Dead Eye Duck says. And that's how we uh, end the story. But just a super dope book. Bucky O'Hare. Go pick it up if you can. I, you know, the Echoes of Future Past are also another way you can pick this up. Just highly recommend it. And if you're not already following us, so make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at the Comic Lounge. And hit that subscribe button, like I said, and the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video goes up. And on that note, I'm out.